What's up, guys? I'm Matt Schuster, and uh, I'm here talking with Moki. Musical background is pretty much just listening to music for most of my life until my 20s started to kind of, I guess maybe just before 20, started kind of putting it out into the virtual world. Covers, originals, bits and pieces, and then moving to Nashville. So really not a crazy like musical background when it comes to performing, but of course I've always listened to music, more specifically country music, which is why I sing country music. the story of country music one thing i love about country music is just like every song is going to is going to tell you a story but a very specific story and a story about kind of where i come from which i adore and i think a lot of people do even if they're not from that um so i love the storytelling of country music and then obviously i think it sounds pretty cool that song was written last fall so the timing was great and you know last fall i feel we hear a lot of songs, not just country, that kind of hit that time of the year. And I love that time of the year. I just kind of had a title called Last Fall, and I heard a little bit of a, a double entendre in there, and definitely there was a, a hint of heartbreak. So I brought it into a few people that I really enjoy um, writing with, and we made a really cool song uh, that seems to be best suiting for me right now where I'm at. I always tell Eric, it's it's one of my most me songs, so that's out. So I really, really just enjoy the song. It kind of... Um, I think describes just how much I love the season, which a lot of people can obviously, I think, relate. Um, but also kind of going deeper into maybe a season going um, kind of to shit. But yeah, so that's last fall in a nutshell. I really like the pre-course. I like the way it sets up. It's this kind of, I don't know, it just really, you know, storm's coming. And then, of course, I just think that course is beautiful and it just kind of sets the tone of like, we might as well just try to enjoy this beautiful season and not ruin it. That that kind of sticks with me. And um, and just the melodies. I love, love the melodies. I typically start with a title. I love, love, love titles. Um, however, when I'm actually in the process of writing a song, it always starts with instrument first, right? So whether it's a guitar or a piano or somebody is doing a track, um, we always love to get a feel. That's the ideal way for me to write. I write my best songs with my favorite guitar riffs. I, I think um, if I was a cowboy, one that's not out yet, actually a lot of songs that aren't out yet, uh, but last fall, Wasted Prayers, they all started with a really cool guitar riff that I enjoyed. And for me, um, and I think a lot of people who create would, would understand this um, when there's, you know, something in the instrumentation that just clicks but not 100% and there's something foreign about it, it really sparks imagination um, and, and stories and really just kind of build the song for you. I listened to Keith Urban um, at a show recently talk about how this, the, he'll, he'll play something and kind of just speak whatever he's playing wants him to say kind of um, the story that it's telling. I feel like when you have um, a good something going with the instruments that it kind of tells a story and you're just there to be the spokesperson for it. So that's my ideal way. Of course, I'm not near as good at, gu at guitar as uh, Keith Urban, so it's a little harder for me, but yeah. I think it's great. I think um, it's... I was, we were just talking about this at lunch. I think it really is... It's just this raw way to connect with your audience. So it's much easier, uh, much more efficient to, for you two to understand each other. So for me, it's really nice to, to get direct feedback from artists about music and what they want. I've always loved just uh, production and saturation. I think it's, I don't know, it's groovy for me. But I've also always loved me and, me and an acoustic guitar. Um, however, that's what I've always done. So being new to the industry, I always love these new sounds. However, fans don't. They love me and a guitar. And you know, I realize that because I'm able to post it and get direct feedback about it. And so I just think it's a really great way to communicate, um, give the people what they want. And I also just think it's a little bit, um, I think the people now have more of a dictation on how things go and who's putting out music and what kind of music they're putting out. And um, so I think that's great. Well, I think we're going to go to the zoo. Um, I want to see kangaroos. I want to see koalas. I want to get in the water. I won't get in the water. So it's not nece necessarily a, a bucket list thing. But um, I do just want to just explore and kind of um, just be out in it just a touch, you know? 
Sharks. Sharks, box jellyfish, blue ring octopus, stonefish, riptides. I'm sure there's a, that's the thing about Australia, is there's so many things. I feel like as tourists, we have no idea. You could be like, yeah, I was just in there. And they're like, you were just in, that was the water of death. And you were just in there. I had no idea. I didn't know. I'm not from here, you know. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just, you know, bring it in a little bit and not, um, branch out like I do back home. Also on my bucket list though is just a, a really good show um, in front of the people here and just kind of getting to meet all the uh, Australian people. I, I don't know anything about it and it's intimidating but just meeting the few people I have today it's just it's just great. The vibes are great, the people are great so I think it's gonna be a blast. That's definitely up there too. Oh yeah we uh, we went to Sydney Opera House um, and on the harbor we're able to go inside and like sit on the steps and and sing a couple songs and film it so that was really cool. I think, um, well, obviously, good music, but um, we're really honing in on just like, you know, some of these songs will just be me. Some of these songs will just be me singing a song, which I think we need more of. I think it's special. Um, it creates more of a connection, I think, between the two of us. I also think just like a connection. I, I feel that I haven't been doing this long enough. I haven't been in the industry long enough to really be super, for lack of a better term, industry. So um, I feel like I'm just one of the boys out there. So I think people will be able to expect maybe just a, a, a really fun, chill, vibey time with just a friend up on stage. A project soon, a um, few more singles before then or a couple more singles before then. And I think just bias opinion, but just life-changing stuff. I mean, just generational music that just can strike a chord with just about anybody and a little bit more of me too i think that's a big thing is not just the person singing the song um on a, on a, on a surface level so i think we'll get a lot more matt schuster here in the next year and um and then a lot more shows and a lot more music and i think just better music you know just keep getting better and better top of the list all the time would be Keith Urban. As of recently, I think pulling back the curtain a little bit from just like what my parents kind of fed me um, would be the Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, Billy Joel, um, probably more in that vein, but that's uh, off the cuff. Keith Urban or Justin Bieber. Probably Illinois by Brett Eldridge just kind of was the first one that I dove into and Brett Eldridge is very special to me uh, and his music just because he grew up so close to where I'm from and it's um, kind of uh, it never happens um, you know that somebody gets to chase that kind of a dream so he kind of set that uh, tone for me and uh, that music did as well Pursuit of Happiness I don't know why I feel like I just love that I love that movie cannot read like if there is a phone that's saying something like I'll be singing and like somebody will be like I don't know. so people like to say take your shirt off and every time I like I see I'll see it and I'll almost sing those words because I can't focus on two things at once and I almost I'm also just like you just don't want to see that but I think just like those kind of little visual distractions because I read into that I'm like why why that you know like it's just there's just some crazy crazy things so I it, it's the reading for me that's that's what I'm when I'm up on stage and I'm actually like thinking into things that's what it is if it's not that then it's you know like obviously the music you know obviously i'm you know up there singing and that's like just what i love to do so i i if it's not um whatever they're typing on their phone then it's uh let's sing the shit out of the song miley Cyrus. uh want to be that song by brett eldridge brett eldridge i've only uh fun fact i've only been to like before i broke into the industry like three concerts so um, still have been a very, like the first festival I ever played was the first festival I've ever attended. Um, but my first 
concert was Brad Eldridge in St. Louis, not too far from home. Zach Bryan at the first festival I went to, um, electric and just so authentic. And I just, it just is like, it's amazing. It really is just the people there. And also it was in Oklahoma and just like a, a beautiful summer evening. So just amazing. Zach Bryan. Spice Girl, it sounds spicy. Uh, paprika. Probably Keith Urban or Zach Bryan. I mean, probably Australia. Um, but in the States, Montana, Big Sky, Montana. I mean, maybe Tennessee Whiskey. I feel like that's kind of the go-to. And it, it's just so fun to try to hit that run every time in the middle of the song. So Tennessee Whiskey. Present day, Zach Bryan or Noah Kahn would be, I think, right now. In the past, um, I mean, probably Justin Bieber, honestly. Soak it in. I have a reminder. Um, two reminders. One is um, pressure is privilege, and then the other one is soak it in. And it's very hard. And I think that would go hand-in-hand hand with just smile, too. That's sometimes just smiling will just change, change your day. But soak it in, really. I mean, we go from town to town, country to country now, and we... You know, we don't get to really visit and, and enjoy it. So the little moments that I get, uh, you know, I would say soak it in and enjoy it. Music. Uh, well, I didn't know like maybe two years or so ago, but I've been just dealing with some health issues and stress management and vocal stuff. And, and I've just had like some, you know, I think everybody deals with it, but just in, you know, in the in industry and what I do as a profession, I've had some very dark times, times where I just nothing Nothing mattered. I didn't really enjoy anything. Um, and, I, and I'll go to ask the question, why are you doing this? And I literally cannot, I, th there, I can't imagine another life. I just, I feel like I am music. I'm never not singing. Stories are one thing, but just the art of verbally expressing yourself um, in such a beautiful way just has always been. I've just, I cannot imagine life without it. It is my, personally, it is my therapy. Um, I think the only reason I went so many years without therapy is because I was able to sing um, and write that down. So music for me means everything. It really is just, it's kind of who I am. Truthfully, I'd probably like be writing a song and I'd be listening to that. Um, but It'd probably be um, Vienna, Billy Joel. That one has also grown on me. That was the one I listened to when I was really young and kind of came back recently. And it just, the more I sing it, um, I did a little version of it. And the more I play it for people, the more I realize it is, I, I wasn't even really listening to the lyrics and that they apply to me so, so much. Half the time I'm up there singing that song, it is literally just me singing to myself because it just, it just hits. It just means so much to me, especially right now. Uh, I think it was my ninth birthday or something like that. I was supposed to, well, actually somewhere around eight or nine, uh, my sister had burned a CD. It was a bunch of country music that I had heard on the radio, Keith Urban, and found myself listening to him all the time. And if I wasn't listening, I was basically in the mirror singing as him. And I think it was my ninth birthday. I might be wrong, but I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be performing for the family and it was supposed to be International Harvester. And then uh, days go by and I, I, I wussed out. But that was, that was where I was like, I want to, I want to, I want to do that. And it was, it's always been between being, you know, a St. Louis Cardinal, a Dallas Cowboy, um, or a, uh, or an artist. And the other two, in no world would that work out. My joints can't hold up. I'm not, I'm not there. I don't have the mentality for it. Um, but the artist thing always stuck. 